Okay. So good afternoon, everyone, once again. Uh, we are going to, my name is Darwin's Chamber, for those that don't know me. Uh, we want to look at uh, pharmacology of hypertension or other uh, pharmacological treatment of hypertension. That is the main uh, topic, all right? It's the main topic, but before we can go into the pharmacological treatment of hypertension, it's very important to understand aspects of uh, physiology, all right? And um, speaking this from the clinical experience here and there, uh, it's not always that you have to treat uh, patients with hypertension pharmacologically. So sometimes it will require you to actually uh, do some lifestyle modifications, what is called non-pharmacological uh, treatment. Okay, so lifestyle, dietary, and so on. So I want us to look at uh, some of those a few aspects, physiology, and then you look at hypertension itself, what hypertension is, and then uh, how common hypertension is, uh, classification or the gradient of hypertension, and, and so on and so forth. And then uh, we'll get into uh, the pharmacological um, treatment of uh, this hypertension. All right. So I really hope everyone is going to follow well um, and are going to help each other understand uh, this aspect of uh, pharmacology okay so now uh, so like I mentioned we are looking at hypertension all right now before we look at uh, what hypertension is let's look at uh, blood pressure okay let's look at what is uh, what blood pressure is then from there we can pick it there okay so blood pressure so now what is blood uh, pressure how can we define uh, blood pressure so blood pressure can simply be defined as a force or other tension of blood against the arterial walls, all right, or rather against the vascular walls, okay? So, but mostly we concentrate much on the arterials or rather on the arteries. So I send that hyper, uh, uh, blood pressure, okay, BP is the tension, tension or force of blood against against the arterial walls okay so i hope we are able to see from there uh, and no one is being left behind so i think that blood pressure is the tension of force uh, of blood against the what the arterial walls now when we look at this blood pressure we should understand that blood pressure depends on certain there are certain things on which uh, blood pressure depends okay so I think that BP depends depends on one we have what is called the preload okay the preload now what do we mean when we say preload remember if we have our heart like that if that is the heart okay and then we have um, the, 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 the right ventricle there uh, and then it goes like that. They also have uh, the left ventricle. Okay. Something like that. I hope we are able to see. Okay. So we have uh, uh, the, the, the heart like that, okay? So we have uh, the left atrium, then we have the uh, left ventricle, we have the right artery, I mean, uh, right ventricle and uh, the uh, right atrium, okay? Now, when we say preload, preload is also called, okay? It's also known as the end diastolic volume. End diastolic volume. 
Okay, I mentioned this that those that have not muted themselves, please mute yourselves so that we are not making noise. All right. Okay. So we are saying that preload is also called end diastolic volume. Now, when we say diastolic, it means the relaxation of what? Of the heart. Okay. The relaxation of the heart. That is a preload. Now, when we say end diastolic, it means that uh, volume, it, we are talking about the volume of blood at the end of diastole, or rather at the end of each relaxation. So when the ventricles relax, to fill in, okay? So uh, the, the volume of blood that fills into the ventricles is what is called a uh, preload or what is called the end diastolic volume, okay? So that is a volume of blood in the ventricles after filling in, okay? After filling in. So when the ventricles relax and then blood comes in, the amount of blood that is going to be there is what is called uh, end diastolic uh, volume or rather what is called preload. Now this preload also depends on certain factors, okay? It depends on one, it depends on things such as uh, uh, blood volume, okay? Uh, blood volume and what is called venous return. Okay, how much of blood is coming into the heart from the vascular system, from the rest of the body, and then it comes back into the heart. That is what is called venous uh, return. So preload depends on, uh, basically on those and also the contractility of the heart. Okay, now the other thing that uh, uh, this blood pressure depends on, okay, the other thing is what is called afterload. Afterload. So two, we have what is called after. Okay. Now, after load, remember I said that preload is the amount of blood or the volume of blood in the ventricles after filling in. That's why it's also called end diastolic what? Volume. Now, when we say after load, we are talking about uh, more like the, um, the resistance against which the ventricles, especially the left ventricle, has to contract again so that it pushes blood out, okay? So remember, uh, uh, the ventricles push blood out, okay? That is into the aorta and into the, uh, into the, um, the pulmonary artery, okay? Like that. So now, in these, in these two blood vessels, where blood is going as the ventricles are contracting to push blood, there is what is called resistance. So that resistance against which the ventricles have to contract to push blood out of their heart is what is called uh, afterload, okay? Afterload. So resistance against which the ventricles have to push blood out into the vascular system. Okay. Now, the other thing that uh, determines blood pressure is what is called the contractility of the heart. Okay. The contractility of the heart. When we say the heart, here we are basically talking about the myocardium because that is the muscle of, of the heart, okay? So how much the heart is able, I mean the heart muscle is able to contract, if it cannot contract so easily, then it means that, uh, uh, it means that blood pressure is going to be low. But if the, uh, the heart muscle contracts so much, then it means that blood pressure is going to be quite high, okay? 
Remember, it's, it's as if uh, you're fighting with someone who has so much muscles, and then once they punch you, just one punch, you're down, okay? So it's a similar thing, because if the heart is able to contract with so much force, then it means that blood is going to go out of the heart at high pressure, okay? So now, we've looked at these uh, three things uh, uh, which determine uh, blood pressure, okay? Now, even when we are looking at uh, regulation or, or rather treatment of hypertension, we are basically going to uh, put in things that are going to do what? That are going to uh, reduce any of these. For example, if, let's say we are talking about uh, preload. Here we talked about preload. We said that preload depends on uh, one, what is called uh, uh, blood volume, okay? as well as venous retain. Now, this venous retain is simply, we are simply talking about the venous, okay, venous tone. So are, are, they, are, are the veins able to retain blood back to the heart? So now, for example, let's talk about blood volume. If someone has very low blood volume, if someone has, what is called, let's say, for example, we're looking at the hypovolemic shock, okay? Um, when someone has hypovolemic shock or has hypovolemia, it means that there is very little fluid, that is blood, in the, in the system. And because of that, it means that there's going to be very low, uh, uh, very low BP, uh, BP, or rather, blood pressure. I'm sure we've seen a horse pipe before, okay? And I'm sure we've seen situations where uh, there's uh, reduced pressure, maybe water is about, the water supply is about to cut, we are living in such environments where uh, water goes and comes back and everything. So I'm sure we've seen such situations where water is almost uh, uh, going or maybe someone is closing the tap little by little and then water starts coming out uh, slowly or rather with uh, little pressure. So we see that as water is coming out of the hose pipe, it is coming out with very little pressure. Why? Because there is little volume of water that is passing through the, through the hose pipe. But if there's a lot of pressure from the source, okay, there's a lot of water that is coming from the source, then we expect that through that hose pipe, we're going to have a lot of pressure, okay? So that is, so for us to be able to regulate uh, the pressure at the end of the hose pipe, we have to reduce the amount of water that is passing through the hose pipe. That is one thing that we have to do, okay? So even in the treatment of hypertension, those are some of the things that we try to, uh, to, 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 to work around with, we give drugs that to, are going to reduce the blood volume and everything, okay? Then another example is uh, on uh, afterload, okay? Afterload, remember we're talking about uh, the resistance, okay? The resistance in the vascular space. So if there's so much resistance, let me give an example of what is called uh, uh, pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension, it means that um, there's so much resistance in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, either in the, uh, in the pulmonary uh, artery or in the lungs themselves, okay? There's so much resistance, maybe there's something, there's some pathology going on in the lungs, such that blood is not able to pass through so easily and everything. So it means that the heart has to pump with so much force so that blood is able to, uh, to pass through. But if we reduce that particular kind of resistance that is there, uh, then we're going to find that we're going to reduce the afterload, okay, and uh, thereby reduce the, the blood pressure. The other thing that we've talked about is the contractility of the myocardium or rather of the heart. So in a case where uh, the heart is contracting so much with so much force than necessary, then we have to give drugs that are going to reduce the contractility of the heart, okay? If we want to increase the, uh, the blood pressure a little, then we have to give drugs that are going to increase the contractility of the heart, okay? So I hope we are following very well uh, uh, and I'm not losing anyone uh, behind, okay? So uh, now, the other thing that I should mention is that this resistance that we're talking about is what is called uh, peripheral vascular resistance, okay? Peripheral vascular resistance okay now we have talked about uh, a number of things here let me give you a formula okay a formula for blood pressure now blood pressure 
is simply a product, okay? It's simply a product of two things. It's a product, we're saying that blood pressure is a product of two things, okay? There's the first thing there and the second thing. Now, what is that first thing? What is supposed to be here and what is supposed to be there? Anyone who can tell me? So blood pressure is a product of two things, right? There's the first, the first parameter and the second parameter. So what are those parameters? Anyone to tell me? Come on guys, anyone can mute themselves and then they, uh, they say what they want to say. Cardiac output. Okay, so we have cardiac output, right? We have cardiac output, very good. Okay. Remember it's a discussion, okay? So we have cardiac output, what else? What is supposed to be there? Exactly, peripheral what? Resistance. Peripheral resistance. Okay, now let me give you an example. If we say that, if we say that y is equal to x multiplied by z, I mean uh, by, uh, by z, okay? If we say that, then it means that if, if we lower x, then even y is going to lower, isn't it? Right? If we reduce the value of x, even the value of y is going to reduce. If we reduce the value of z, even the value of y is going to reduce. So in other words, what we're saying is that for us to reduce y, we have to reduce either x or z or both of them. Okay. Why? Because y is direct proportional to x and, as, and also direct proportional to z. Now, it's a similar thing. We're saying that blood pressure is direct proportional to cardiac output as well as direct proportional to what? Peripheral resistance, okay? Peripheral vascular resistance, okay? Now, that means that if we increase cardiac output, we are increasing blood pressure. If we increase peripheral uh, vascular resistance, we are increasing blood pressure. If we reduce any of them, then we are reducing our blood pressure. Or if we reduce both of them, we are as well reducing blood pressure. So even when we look at treatment of hypertension, basically we are going to try to work around uh, these things. Those two, three parameters that I mentioned that uh, they determine blood pressure, they are the ones that are embedded uh, in this, okay? Remember we, we mentioned this one had to do with what is called afterload. Remember I mentioned that afterload is uh, more like the resistance against which the ventricles have to pump blood uh, uh, out of the heart, okay? Then we talked about uh, preload and blood volume, okay? Preload and blood volume are contained in cardiac output. Let me show you. Now, what is cardiac output? Cardiac output is simply the volume of blood that is pumped out of the heart in one minute, okay? This is volume of blood pumped out of the heart in one minute, okay? So therefore, the units are meals per minute, okay? And meals per what? Per minute. Now, sometimes we can use liters, anyone? Liters per minute. All right, now, this cardiac output, CO, not clean coarser, this cardiac output is equal to, or rather is uh, a product of two things, okay? And what are those two things? One, we have what is called stroke volume, okay? Stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. Okay, multiplied by heart rate. So I send that cardiac output is equal to stroke volume multiplied by uh, heart rate. That is SV by HR. Now, it means that, now what is stroke volume? Stroke volume is the uh, volume of blood pumped out of the heart per beat. Okay? So whenever your heart beats, 
the amount of blood that is pumped out, the, out of the heart is what is called stroke volume. Okay, I hope we are following. So, if let's say, for example, your heart beats, all right, if your heart beats, then uh, let's say maybe 60 mils of, uh, of blood is ejected out of the heart. Then it means that 60, uh, uh, 60 mils is your uh, stroke volume. Okay, now, Heart rate, we know what heart rate is. Heart rate is simply the number of beats per minute, okay? So now, indirectly, uh, let me show you. Uh, I'm sure you guys from uh, your first year, you looked at what is called um, uh, dimension analysis, right? Yeah, uh, some of you actually, uh, I taught you that, so you can't say no. Okay, so we're saying that cardiac output, all right, cardiac output is equal to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate, okay? Now, we said that stroke volume is, uh, is the amount of blood that is pumped out of the heart per beat. So in other words, we are saying that volume of blood, volume is in what? In mils, okay? So it is in mils per beat, okay? Mils per beat. Then multiplied by heart rate, Okay, heart rate is the number of beats. Now, that number of beats is simply, uh, it's dimensionless, okay? So in other words, we can say it is uh, beats per, uh, I mean, that is, um, heart rate is the number of beats per minute, okay? Beats per minute, okay? So now, what does it mean? We can see that that is uh, that formula that I've written there. It is the same as saying this is uh, mils over bits multiplied by bits divided by minutes. Okay, so that bits and bits there they cancel. Then you're going to remain with mils per what? Per minute. Remember what we mentioned about cardiac output. We said that cardiac output is a amount of blood, the volume of blood that is pumped out of the heart per minute. And we said that the units are mils per, per minute. And that's what we've got in there. Okay. So I hope we are following uh, what we're doing so far. Okay. So since we found that cardiac output is equal to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate, we can therefore, where there is uh, cardiac output in that formula, we can put uh, 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 those parameters. So therefore, 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 BP is equal to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate multiplied by peripheral vascular resistance. Okay, so we can now see from there that um, uh, if we if we alter any of these parameters, so we alter stroke volume, of which we said that stroke volume uh, depends on things like uh, uh, blood volume, okay, blood volume, uh, venous return, and so on, venous tone rather, okay, because this is what is determining what is called uh, preload, okay, so. What we are trying to say is that the more blood comes into the heart, if a lot of blood comes into the heart, even more blood is going to be pumped out of the heart, okay? You cannot give out what you do not have. You can only give out what you have. If you have plenty, you can give out plenty. If you have little, you can give out little, okay? So that is the same thing. Venous retain, we're talking about uh, blood that is Coming back from the uh, preload, that is the amount of blood that is going to be the, in the heart, all right, after uh, the heart has relaxed and it has been filled in, okay? So those are some of the factors that we need to understand as we look at uh, this uh, uh, blood pressure, okay? Now, let us look at uh, regulation of uh, uh, blood pressure, okay? Rather, uh, physiology or regulation of uh, this blood pressure. Are we following? Are we okay? Are we safe? Anyone to respond?
Yes, Hello. Sir. Okay. Well, sir. Yes, we're following. I really hope I really hope network is okay. We're not skipping and everything. Network is always a problem anyway. Okay. So let's look at uh, regulation. Regulation of blood pressure. Okay. Now when we look at regulation of blood pressure, okay, there are about four, or maybe let me say three uh, uh, targets, okay, uh, three targets that uh, should be all blood pressure. And when we talk of that, we, we should be thinking about the treatment, the things that we're going to be doing uh, for us to treat patients with it blood pressure okay so there are about three targets uh, anatomical targets that we target someone wants to say something okay so what are those targets we say target areas okay what are those target areas what are our targets number one we have the blood vessels Okay, we have what? The blood vessels. Remember, we talked about uh, we talked about uh, preload, afterload, contractility. Okay. Now this preload, we are talking about uh, blood volume mainly, blood volume and uh, venous tone or the vascular tone. Okay. So now, so when we say blood vessels, we're talking about arteries or other arterioles and venues. Okay. Or veins. All right. So now, how is this our target area in regulation of blood pressure. Remember, I mentioned that um, these blood vessels, that's why we have what is called peripheral vascular resistance or the vascular resistance. So if there's increased resistance in the blood vessels, it means that there's going to be a lot of pressure, right? So there are uh, chemicals or hormones uh, that are going to work uh, 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 on the, the arterials or on the venues for us to be able to either increase the blood pressure or reduce the blood pressure. Now we should understand that uh, the smooth muscles of these arterials, okay, on the smooth muscles we have what are called alpha-1 uh, receptors, right? Okay, alpha-1 receptors. When those alpha-1 receptors uh, are stimulated, what happens? Okay, there's, there's going to be, um, there's going to be a contraction of the smooth muscles on the blood vessels and when there's contraction of the smooth muscles what is going to happen is that there's going to be increased uh, increased what a, a vascular resistance okay so simulation of these receptors what are called the alpha 1 receptors okay on the blood vessels is going to increase so if this is stimulated okay if this is stimulated, then we are going to have uh, increased resistance, okay? And this increased resistance implies increased BP, okay? When there is inhibition of these alpha-1 receptors, we are going to have decreased uh, resistance, all right? There's decreased resistance, which implies decreased blood pressure okay so that is one way uh, in which uh, uh, blood pressure is regulated now here in this case since we're talking about hypertension so there's no need of us uh, stimulating these alpha 1 receptors right there's no way we can be stimulating the alpha 1 receptors so that there's resistance and then we increase the blood pressure instead what we do if there's hypertension then we have to inhibit these alpha 1 receptors 
when we inhibit them, there's going to be decreased resistance. Decreased resistance is going to be reduction in blood pressure. So that is one way in which uh, blood pressure is uh, regulated by looking at the blood vessels, uh, which have alpha-1 receptors. Alpha-1 receptors can either be stimulated or inhibited. When we stimulate, we increase vascular resistance, which is going to increase the blood pressure. When we, uh, let me give you an example. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, in a case of, um, in a case of, let's say, uh, remember, uh, fight or flight, okay? Fight or flight, in a case of fear and everything, you find that uh, there's going to be uh, regulation of those uh, receptors. Okay. What is the other target? Okay, what is our other target uh, as we look at uh, uh, regulation of this? We, are, we also have the heart. Okay, we have the heart. Remember we talked about contractility. Okay, contractility and also afterload. All right, contractility and afterload. That, we are basically almost talking about the same thing because uh, if there's so much resistance, then we need the heart to contract more, much more for it to push blood up, okay? But if we don't want, in the case of hypertension, we don't want the heart to be contracting abnormally. It shouldn't contract with so much force. We need to reduce. Now, on the heart, we have what are called on this heart, all right? Let's say that is our heart, okay? On the heart, we have what are called uh, beta, uh, beta 1 uh, receptors, okay? Beta 1 receptors, these, uh, when stimulated, they increase uh, the heart rate. I mean, they increase uh, the contraction of the heart. They also increase the heart rate. Once that happens, it means that uh, the afterload is going to increase, okay? Uh, there's, a, there's going to be a lot of, uh, I mean, there's going to be more contraction of the heart more force and then uh, our blood goes out at higher pressure. Now, we don't want high pressure, we need that to be inhibited, right? We need that to be inhibited, so what we do, so I think that when we stimulate, there's going to be increased contractility. Okay, and that implies that there is increased blood pressure. When we inhibit those uh, beta uh, receptors, beta 1 receptors, it means that we are decreasing the contractility and the heart rate, by the way. And that implies that we are decreasing the blood pressure. Okay. So those are the things that, uh, that we do in that case. All right. Now. Uh, let's look at uh, the uh, the other, the third target area, okay? Uh, in as much as regulation of blood pressure is concerned, okay? What is the third target area? Are we following? Anyone to respond? Are we following? Yes, yeah. so we are following. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, make sure if you have a question, make sure you ask, huh? Okay, so we look at the third target area, okay? What is the third uh, target area? Now, by the way, um, remember I mentioned that, I mentioned that uh, the blood vessels have what, uh, what is called alpha-1 receptors, huh? So what is that that can stimulate alpha-1 receptors in the blood vessels, okay? So what can stimulate alpha-1 receptors in the blood vessels we have? Um, we have several things, but I'm going to talk about two things. So we have what is called no adrenaline. Okay, no adrenaline. NA, and what is called angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2, okay. So, those are some of the things that can stimulate alpha-1 receptors uh, in, in, um, in the arteries, I mean, uh, or in the blood vessels, okay? The, then on the heart, what are some of the things that can stimulate, or uh, that can stimulate uh, beta-1 uh, receptors there? We have, um, 
and we have two things we can have one uh what is called uh no 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 adrenaline no adrenaline and we also have what is called acetylcholine okay acetylcholine those are some of the things that can uh, stimulate uh, blood, um, i mean uh, that can stimulate um, uh, the the alpha i mean the beta receptors on the heart now uh, I, I wanted to talk about the third target area the third target area is the kidney okay so the kidney has to do with uh, blood volume huh? okay blood volume now how exactly is the kidney involved in blood volume regulation okay other than just blood volume it also uh, it is also involved it also uh, uh, helps also in uh, uh, on the heart on the blood vessels as well as on the heart okay um, so like 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 we shall see uh, uh, further so let's look at uh, the kidneys what happens with the kidneys for us to be able to regulate our blood pressure what happens with the kidneys let's see what happens in the kidney okay now when you look at the kidney we have the bomas capsule remember what what is called the nephron from grade 12 i don't know if you've done if you've done the anatomy of the of the kidney yet okay uh, so we have the nephron so that nephron we have the Bowman's capsule uh, it goes like that from the the loops the loop of Henle uh, we have the descending uh, uh, the descending limb the ascending limb uh, distal convoluted tubule proximal convoluted tube and so on and so forth and then we have that we have that uh, uh, um, uh, what is called the glomerulus okay and then goes so we have the afferent afferent arterial and we also have what is called the uh, efferent arterial okay efferent arterial now uh, just next next to the glomerulus huh? next to the glomerulus near 